Gary Johnson is a philosophy teacher living in New Orleans. He spends his day teaching his half-full class about Kant and Nietzsche. He has two cats. He spends time bird watching and working on electronics. And on the side, he works with the local police department in gearing up undercover officers for sting operations. One day, the officer who is supposed to be impersonating a hitman for hire is suddenly suspended right before an operation is set to begin. Gary is asked to take on the officer's place. Gary, baggy clothed with embarrassing faint sweat stains, isn't sure he's the man for the job, but he reluctantly agrees. He trades a couple pieces of clothing with another officer and steps into the restaurant. Afterwards, Gary realizes he's pretty good at pretending to be a killer, so he decides to do it again, and soon becomes the go-to guy to impersonate a hitman. Richard Linklater's Hitman is a film about putting on a disguise, and that is exactly how we first meet Glenn Powell as the nerdy main character. The baggy clothes hide the actor's sculpted movie star physique. The large glasses hide his boyish good looks. It's not until he begins to take on his Hitman persona that we see the real movie star. Hitman is a film about acting and about the collision of personality, self, and consciousness. One truth is established early on in the film. There are no such thing as Hitmen. There isn't some random guy walking around ready to be paid to kill. Anyone who hires a hitman is usually talking to an undercover police officer. The idea of hitmen come from the movies. We are explained this over a rapid montage of the most memorable hitmen in cinema. Because of the cinematic nature of hitmen, the concept of such a person is heightened to the levels of a film. So when Gary meets any one of the typical Linklater-esque group of people looking to snuff out an enemy, he plays into this idea, and the characters he plays grow more and more cinematic. A Russian man with long, jet black hair, smoking a cigar. A British weirdo with a bowl cut. He's straight out of a Bond film, and yet the perps accept these strange characters as reality. Their suspension of disbelief is engaged. As outrageous as the story is, Gary Johnson was a real person. He actually donned costumes and pretended to be a hitman for the Austin Police Department back in the 90s and early 2000s. The costumes and makeup never got as ridiculous as depicted in the film, but that's one of the aspects that make Hitman so much fun. The film is written by Richard Linklater and Glenn Powell, reviving a time-tested technique Linklater has employed in the past with his Unforgettable Before trilogy. And once again, this technique has paid off. Adapting a news article written by Skip Hollinsworth, who also penned the article that inspired another Linklater film, Bernie. Linklater and Powell have crafted a script that feels like a Billy Wilder and IAL Diamond collaboration. It's a seamless blend of comedy and crime, romance and drama. It's a classic golden age Hollywood romp made for modern audiences. The audience at the screening I was in was eating up everything that was offered with a huge smile on their faces. Applause would erupt sporadically. It's a damn shame this film is going straight to Netflix. This is a true theater experience. The content of the article only takes up the first act of the film, ending with Gary meeting a woman named Maddie who wants to have her controlling husband killed. Gary, playing a hitman named Ron, convinces her to take matters into her own hands by getting a divorce and starting a new life. The film continues in a fictional direction when Maddie reaches out to Ron and they strike up a fling, which becomes complicated with Gary having to embody this persona and juggle keeping secrets from Maddie and from the police. The first act of Hitman is the weakest, leaning a bit too much into the silly aspects of the film and a slightly overbaked voiceover. The audience isn't given enough time to get to know Gary for us to get behind the crazy costumes just yet. The film settles into exceptional territory when the romantic plot begins. Glenn Powell and Adria Arjona have the best on-screen chemistry this year. From their very first meeting, the sexual tension is palpable. Linklater's knack for creating romance anyone can get behind shines in Hitman. Glenn Powell has crafted the perfect leading man role for himself, and it's easy to see this film solidify him as a new Hollywood leading man. He showcases his many facets as an actor. He's funny, charming, serious when he needs to be. He's dedicated to make Gary as fully fleshed out as possible. Adria Arjona is a delight. She's sassy and smart, beautiful yet vulnerable. She shines as bright as any screwball romantic comedy leading lady from the golden age of cinema. Like his other films, Linklater takes a laid back approach to the story, letting things move casually and giving plenty of time for the audience to fall for these characters. Some of the technical aspects of the film feel a little too laid back. One wishes there was more attention given to the noir style and the images as much as it was on the page, but any technical issues are assuaged by the impeccable script that features some of the funniest comedic scenes in recent time. 
there is a pervasive cleverness that's been lost in comedy since the wave of more improv-focused films crashed into the shore in the early 2000s. It's a blessing to have a filmmaker like Linklater around and making movies. It's a rare occasion where expecting more of the same is a good thing. He's a filmmaker who brings an everyman attitude to philosophically rich material, engineering his films to be equally accessible and thoughtfully complex. 